let's take a look also this is this is that same part but we're going to run it through most people here if you've bought a post from us we've given you the option for a simulation the module works driven simulation through mastercam and and even now with some of the newer technology we'll run it use an external post where we'll take the centerline code run it through the post feed it back into simulation still not true gnm code it's, it's a lot closer than it, it comes direct out of mastercam but it's still not the actual gnm code itself on the left hand side we actually took the posted code we hit post at both at the same time we got through posting and through full machine simulation using gnm code on the simco side and here we are 15 minutes in using the module works driven simulation produced straight out of mastercam so again back to what ryan's saying as a programmer maybe it's not the end of the world if you have to do it once but i'm i'm guilty of it like most of you guys where I'm testing every single tool path. And if you aren't disciplined to have a starting stock or a stock model or an STL, you know, previous uh, tool paths, you're gonna spend a lot of time. Taking that a step further, um, again, the Simco Verify is gonna be reading off the Mastercam NCI side of things. Um, but then of course, uh, because we have the Simco Editor, which is gonna be a true G-code simulation kernel, um, this allows us to push out all the information from Mastercam by utilizing a, uh, a Simco Edit integration tool from within Mastercam. A very similar process is I would go ahead and select on my machine. We would simply tell it, do we want to run this in just a back plotter only, or do I want to pull in the full-blown machine simulation in order to collision check and detect access limits? Um, again, a very similar uh, style interface where we would go ahead and set up our geometry so we can push out and save out the information based on the models as far as our workpiece, fixture, and stock. Um, and then, of course, uh, it, we also can tell it the location in which we wish to save those files. Um, what that's actually going to do is that's actually going to be creating a couple setup files that can be referenced and saved later. And so if any modifications were made to the program itself, um, or you want to have the shop floor uh, take a look at um, at those files, you know, uh, those can certainly be used uh, from from there. Yeah, so if you run through the, um, through this as well, then obviously we um, we are able to come right into the editor by itself. Um, again, you may have used us uh, as far as a G code editor or maybe just the back plotter itself. Um, but needless to say, we could certainly play that through if we wanted to from the start. Uh, we could certainly clean this up a little bit too and um, you know turn off like uh, all my rapid moves and, and everything else and take a look in this case I'm, i am doing a machine simulation so of course i have the actual machine models and everything here uh, the other thing too that i could do is certainly go to a certain area in in the code um, and if i click on that particular line it's then going to show me on the part itself and update to that location um, as as well. So again, we can certainly use these tools in, in a just a back plot only or a full blown machine simulation uh, portion of it as well. So, so Ryan, if you're the if you're the guy on the floor, and uh, I, I'm guilty of this, and I, I wish I could go back in time and take it back, but as a machinist, I always thought, ah, the programmers, they don't know what they're doing. I'm going to fix their program on the floor, and then hope it doesn't blow up. If I go sure. into if I go into the NC code and I add three spring passes or I start removing depth of cuts, you can go into the editor and I can go ahead and skip to just the half inch ML that does the finishing pass and I can make sure that that's working just fine. Exactly. Yeah. So if I found a um, in this case, I, I did modify my code a little bit uh, in order to add a couple extra spring passes, you know, as part of that. Um, there's a couple of tools that we offer in order to see that, you know, file comparison certainly being one of them. Um, but, you know, I ver I personally like to, uh, to actually visualize the part itself. And so um, that's where we could actually load up those. Um, that, that G code coming back from the floor again, and um, and then take a look at what that is actually doing on the actual um, part itself, and, um, and and see those additional spring passes, you know, in in action, of course. So so it gives you a chance to uh, to again double check and see what's actually going on, make sure they're good changes either after it's been ran or maybe even before you certainly run it on the machine itself. 
um, in order to make sure, you know, everything is good to go. So the Simcoe edit will allow me as a programmer to compare what the guy on the floor ran versus what I posted out. Of course. But if I'm the guy on the floor trying to help and I yep. modify the code, I can rerun it through the back plot or I can rerun it through simulation to make sure that my edits don't blow up the part. Exactly. You didn't miss a decimal point, a negative symbol, you know, something along those lines, of course.